What's up, everybody, and welcome to my first episode of the Rev Match podcast that I've filmed in a very, very long time. I thought while we were on uh, lockdown still, or I know it's easing up now, but for the most part, I'm still partaking as best I can in the lockdown stuff that I would try and sort out the podcast as one of my little passion projects that never really went anywhere. And hopefully this all sounds okay and sounds good enough to listen to. Uh, I haven't really got any set topics. I thought I'd just literally turn on the system because we finally have video back. So you can watch this over on the RevMatch podcast channel on YouTube. And we we have video now, which I haven't had for a long time. We are kind of located in my house, <laughs> in, a, in a room in the house. So we'll have to try and work out if we can get other guests in. I've got the microphone on a stand. So I'm going up and down now on the videos to show that. So we can uh, hopefully get some guests in here as well put two chairs in and just just talk uh but i thought we would start off with just saying uh well, me updating you guys on what i've been doing a lot of uh haven't really posted a whole lot on youtube over the last few months um and i'm gonna i'm gonna lay the blame solely really on uh men mental health I, I don't really like to talk about that a huge amount but i do believe it's quite an important thing we're going through a lot of stuff privately when it whether it becomes down to relationships and work life and like, I think I think I'm at the stage of my life where I'm really wondering who who I am and who I want to be. Uh, wh what what's my purpose? What what do I do well? What do I do terrible at? What am I passionate about? What do I want? Where do I where do I go from here? Um, when I turned thirty, I really started to uh, put effort into a lot of stuff that I never really even thought about. Uh, mixed martial arts being one of them. It's something I've really become passionate about over the last well since I turned thirty, since August last year. And um, really been putting a lot of effort into that. And I train with a fantastic fighter called James Webb, another local Colchester boy, also world champion from the Cage Warriors division. Um, hopefully we'll see him one day in UFC. That would be one of one of my dreams. We've, we've become good friends over the time of training and I, I see him quite regularly still. Even, well, lockdown hasn't helped at all with that, but we've all kept in touch through that in the group chats and stuff and it's just been something I've kind of been focusing on I, and the only thing with mixed martial arts is I hurt myself so much I think I've trapped a nerve now in my arm from jiu-jitsu recently because um, a couple of us are, are meeting up to do that and uh, it's it's absolutely killing me if I'm if I'm being completely honest we're not doing it in a gym though it's all private we're all doing it in with our within our own own means and risks and stuff factors and that we all understand it um but I've really hurt myself to the point where at certain angles it makes my hand shake. I'm getting it looked at tomorrow by a fantastic author. Is it author? No, what's his name? What do you call it? Uh, it's not an orthopedic doctor. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm getting it looked at by a guy tomorrow. And hopefully it will all all be uh, not too bad, not end of the world. Um, obviously, I bought that yellow Civic SIR. If any of you don't know, I picked up a 1991 JDM Civic SIR. The whole... The whole point of that was, uh, I don't really know. It was just a good deal for me. Like, it wasn't working properly. It was rusty, unloved. The guy had obviously fell completely out of love with it and was willing just to let it become a scrap car. I offered him, well, I gave him the exact money he wanted. There was no deal of this. He just told me how much he wanted, and I literally sent him that money and went and picked it up. Didn't properly look around it. Didn't get to drive it or anything. Drive it like I made him drive it straight on the trailer. So the first time I actually got to drive that car was off of the trailer when it got to my house. Um, it was an absolute mess, borderline embarrassing if I'm completely honest. And I'm only saying all this now because the previous owners decided to be quite spiteful after I've put it up as a swaps sort of thing. But whatever, isn't it? I paid him the money. That means that car is now mine. If I wanted to turn it into a doghouse, I could. But I didn't. I got it back working all legit on the road and I still have new parts to fit on it. I haven't put it up for sale. I just put it up for swaps to see if I could get offered anything else. So I'd quite like, if I'm being completely honest, an Evo. Um, I'm not, I don't really care what generation, I just quite like an Evo, so I just thought I'd see if anybody would be willing to swap. Main reason is, I didn't realise how fast we were end up getting the Red Civic finished. Which now obviously means I have my track car again. So once my head is a bit more clear and I feel a bit more focused, I'm feeling good now, I'm feeling much, much better than I did at the start of all of this, but, um, I, at the start of this lockdown stuff as well, but, um... Once, once my head's a bit more clear and I'm, I'm more focused on the driving aspect of everything, um, I will definitely be out in the Civic once again, my little red EG6. Uh, I haven't sold the yellow one yet. Um, it is available if anybody does want it. I'm, I was never planning on keeping it forever anyway. It was just something for me to tinker with over lockdown, and I have done that, and I've enjoyed it, and I've used it a bit, but it's just uh, something I'd happily swap or pass on. It's not a, it's not going to be a, a staple of my life for sure. Um on, the, on that little Civic as well, though, it's, it's a great, fun little car. Russ at Honda, who's really been maintaining it, has 
done a fantastic job of putting all the bits together. It's got one of the best dash conversions I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, I've also uh, set up, which you'll see me if you're watching on the YouTube or on one of the, the video streaming apps, whatever I decide to put this up on. Uh, I've, uh, I've decided to start putting this um, in video form, which I'm using for my Twitch streams. I could have actually streamed this live, to be fair. I probably might do that in the future because I'm not going to edit these. These are going to be straight up podcasts. It is what it is. What I say is what I say, and I have to take responsibility for that. I wanted to really touch over my YouTube channel because it's something that I have done for a long time on and off. It's always been like a passion project that just hasn't really ever taken off to how I now hope it would. At the beginning, it was just for me to post stupid jackass style videos of my car. I saw it as a chance for me and my friends to have our own little TV series without ever, without it ever becoming or being needed back in from anybody. And as YouTube's become this like massive thing, at the beginning, the girl I was with didn't really approve of it. She didn't understand it. And I'll be honest, I just fancied her. So I was like, whatever, I'll just stick it out. Um, yeah, just stick that out, you know, and just just stick the YouTube out and hit, you know, just do whatever she says, really. If she doesn't happen with it, well, who cares? It's not earning me any money. And I obviously started before anybody else. I was doing car vlogs before a vlog was even a thing. So it was a very interesting, fun thing, but I just kind of was like, well, I don't care. I'm just going to kind of see, keep seeing this girl, keep seeing where this goes and, you know, whatever, see if real life takes over. Whereas I wish now looking back, I'd stuck at it. And I think that's now why I'm so willing to uh, try everything because you don't know. You know, it might not be happening for you right now. And this goes out to everybody trying YouTube, whether you've got one subscriber or 100,000. Uh, if you're getting 10 views or a million, like it may not be happening right now. But if you're not in the game, how can you win? You know, you've got to keep sticking it out. And even when that fame and success may come, you have to understand that may not last forever. And that's something I'm fully aware of. I'm, I am I don't ever expect my channel to take off, but I would love it to. Um I'm trying to work out, and this is why I think I haven't really uploaded a huge amount on the builds and stuff on there, is work out what what I'm doing. Um, I, I feel like the yellow Civic has obviously been very popular. Hondas tend to go down really well on the channel. But for the most part, I'm 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 bored. I'm bored of what I'm doing. There's not this is why we've started to do this Civic uh, project that I have now. It's like a, we're doing a civic a pickup truck, um, like a Ute style build, and it was just because I had this car, no one wanted to buy it. I was like, well, what do we do with this thing? Let's sell it. I'm trying to sell it, sorry. And I was like, let's just cut it up. Let's cut the roof off of it. I haven't posted the videos yet because I want to get further on in that build before I undertake any videos of it um, to post, purely because I understand what it's like as an audience member, how fast and how regular you upload to how popular it is um you could look at certain channels like goon squad who have multiple builds constantly on the go um but they focus in on one until one gets to a dead stop where they can't do any more and then they go right back to another build where they bam 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 i am not in a position where i can upload a video daily i'm not even in a position where i can upload a build video three times a week which would be my dream if i could do a monday wednesday friday build updates i just don't i i work a full-time job under 621. I also uh, work for the family business, um, doing product sourcing in China and Taiwan. That is something I really am keen to get more involved in. As I'm getting older, that side of business is really interesting to me. And my dad's done such a fantastic job with that company. I want to learn as much as I can while we still have the time to, while he's still working with us and showing us how it, how it all goes. I also have always had in the back of my mind, I want to start this, pro this podcast again and, and really get involved in this and get um, guests on and talk about stuff that I'm really passionate about and it doesn't have to be cars. I know I've called it RevMatch, but that's because obviously I thought it was a cool name <laughs> um, and it obviously relates to my car car passion. It is a passion. It's not something I can get out of. It's, it's, um, as much as I wish I'd go, right, I'm packing up the car stuff and I'm going to go collect stamps and earn loads of money and build, buy a house and have a wife and kids and stuff i know that i'm always going to be messing around with my cars regardless and uh, with my adam ival channel i'm just going to be open and honest in this uh, because i think it's probably best to so you guys can understand if i'm ever get a bit down occasionally or whatever like with the adam ival channel i'm very very fortunate to have a following of any size i understand that i understand how difficult it is as a youtuber of any size to keep an audience and i, I fully get it and i I love, I love having my audience. I love the interaction I get to have with the vast majority of people. Obviously, there are a few bad eggs in that, but for the most part, I have a, a wicked audience, and I'm, I'm so honoured to be in that position. But I feel like I am very pigeonholed into the Honda world on that. Now, you can see behind me, if you're watching on video, I have skateboards of various different cars up behind me. I am very passionate about many, many cars, 
cars that you may not even think. I love 4x4s. And I know that might sound stupid. And I don't mean off-roading. I mean, like, luxury 4x4s are something I love. Like, I, I obviously have my Volkswagen Touareg, my old-ass 100 million mile Volkswagen Touareg. Um, and I would one day love to upgrade that. And I even worry, like, if I ever did, like, get the 4x4 I want, or one of the next level 4x4s, how would my audience react? Because it's not a Honda. I'm, I'll be honest, the yellow EG6 is probably going to be the last Honda I buy for a long time. I'd obviously dream of owning a Honda NSX, but to me, they're like luxury cars when they're so expensive for such a old car. It's one of those things like a tree. It's like a, a luxury. It's not something that I go, yeah, cool. I want one of those. I'm just going to go buy it. I'd have to be so f further on in life with return with the when it comes to money and earnings and income and family and I, I that sort of thing like okay i could go and sell my m3 and the two civics and i could go buy an nsx but I, it would sit in my garage and it barely get used like I'd, I'd be able to modify it slowly but not in any way shape or form what i want i think and it's just something that I, i've kind of buried to the back of my mind and i've gone do you know what I can't do it yet, and I, like I was saying, I feel pigeonholed. I feel like I try and do anything else, I lose a thir I lose two thirds of my audience. If I try and do any other content other than Honda on that channel, it's just so demotivating. And I was like, well, if I start up a new channels, uh, the new channels which I'm going to start. So I've actually got three, and I'll run you through them right now. Um, uh, one I haven't posted any videos on yet. I've only got one video on there from four years ago. It's just called Ads. Okay, it hasn't got a URL or anything yet. You can find it on the uh, sidebar, I think, of my main channel. I'm not sure. Let me have a quick look. But um, I also have the RevMatch channel, uh, which is right now 169 subscribers. So I'm so grateful for the 169 of you that have clicked over and are willing to listen to my ramblings. And I also have a channel which is now called Adam J. And this has 2,130 subscribers, which I'm very lucky to have, mainly through videos of my Dalmatian, which I'm now going to be transferring over to my new youtube news uh where it's going to be car car news i'm going to stay in the car industry and i'm going to focus all on that and try and take all the information from all the great news sources and tell the stories in my own way and anything i hear i can update and i'm also going to put across some uh, new followers uh to hopefully new followers to other youtubers so you might find some youtube series youtube guys that you might really enjoy and i can keep everybody up to date in one place i feel like it's something i'm really really want to do and i haven't done it before because i'm a bit, a bit nervous of trying a new style of video now i have this amazing computer that i finally invested in to get my gaming basically I, I, okay to get my gaming back on track so um I, I i now have the opportunity to film straight from Streamlabs, which is how i stream on twitch and it just makes life so much easier and i can upload it straight to youtube and there's no messing around it really is just an absolute blessing in disguise me doing all of this um my main channel adam ival though i would like to keep uh loyal to ridiculous cars and my um so ridiculous car reviews and features and also my friends builds and stuff like that and with with only having the and obviously the story times as well will stay on there but i need to think of the story times and i did have one to say and i can't remember what it was <laughs> so we've got to get back to really understanding uh and the under and and kind of me just kind of sorting out my life to a point where it doesn't feel like such a mess i feel like with everything going on i've just got so much chaotic bullshit going on in my life and so many emo mixed conflicting emotions in in my head um i don't know what to do i think one of the big things about the adam ival channel is i understand that the nissan isn't the most popular car on there but it is my favorite car so when i'm posting stuff like that and i just get negative reactions like oh you shouldn't be doing this you'd be doing the civic when are you gonna finish the civic i'm like you know what fuck off i don't want to finish the fucking civic in the minute i want to fucking do my nissan but when it comes to drifting, my my drifting isn't just something that I get to show you guys and it's cool and I get to go, oh, look at my progression. Look, I couldn't even do a figure of eight here and now I'm out drifting with low origin. I can't, I can't you know, I understand that the story like of it is that, but I'm not filming my drift stuff for any other reason so I, so other, I can look back on it and hopefully one day when I have children, I can show them and be like, look at what your dad did before he'd like become disabled and ill and fat. You know, it was like, it's like, I want to be able to show them, show my future I want to be able to look back in the future and be like, wow, I had a cool fucking life. You know, like, it was sick. Fucking dope. And uh, I feel like um, being pigeonholed into this, like, oh, you're the Honda guy, so that's what you've got to do. Uh, I reached out to Honda UK multiple times. I'm, this is the first time I've ever said this publicly, by the way. I reached out to Honda UK multiple times over the years to try and work directly with them. Uh, I said I've got a big Honda following. I'm very passionate about the brand. The first time round, the guy 
said he'd sort me out. I had 8,000 subscribers and the guy, I can't remember who it was. He doesn't work there anymore. I know that because I followed him on Twitter and he said he'd left. And I was like, okay, good. You're a fucking horrible cunt. He uh, basically replied to me saying, yes, you can have the new Type R for a day. We just need to see what you're doing. So I'd filmed an Integra video, I think it was, or something along those lines. And I sent them that. And I was like, this is the sort of thing it will be. I just really want to get behind the wheel. I've got a lot of people that uh, enjoy hearing me talk about Hondas and seeing what my thoughts and my vibes are with them. And the guy at Honda PR at the time basically replied going, uh, yeah, we'll sort you out something. It'll be great, blah, blah, blah. I was on top of the world. I thought, fuck, this is so cool. Like, I can't believe Honda are willing to risk this on me. Like, this is so fucking cool, man. And then the day came. And uh, well, the day before I was meant to pick up the car, I said, just confirming, like, where do I go to pick up this car? Because I booked the day off work. I had everything organized. I had a drone guy ready to help me. And uh, I didn't get a reply. And I messaged him again going on the day going, hey, dude, do you know where am I meant to be coming like to come pick up this car? Because I knew I was only going to have it for a few hours. Bear in mind, the drone guy took a day off work. I took a day off work. And uh, they didn't even have the courtesy to reply to me ever again. And I was like, what the fuck, man? This this is annoying. And I was like, well, okay, that sucks. Maybe the, it just got a bit lost in translation. I said, hey, look, I re- re- emailed again going, hey, look, let me know if we can rearrange this. I'm really like interested in doing this. I only need the car for a couple of hours. Like It'd be great. Never heard anything back. And then found out Honda... He had a new um, PR guy, and I was like six. So I followed him on Twitter, and I tried to um, get him to interact with me. And I and I, I, I see he posted up the new NSX. I was like, oh, it'd be wicked to do a video on the new NSX, not even thinking that I'd get that chance. And I think this is all still on my Twitter now. Um, and uh, he replied going... Have you got any? I said I've worked with Toyota before. Um, here is the video, and he and obviously the video was a clickbaity kind of video because Toyota had spent a lot of money sending me over to Sweden to do it, and it hadn't got huge views. And I was like, right, I'm gonna change the title and stuff. And uh, he was like, you're you're. He obviously didn't watch the video at all because he was like, you're sending me a video of you crashing a limited edition car. I wasn't even driving it, and we didn't crash. It was a it was a clickbait title, um, uh, a limited edition manufacturer's car for me to lend you a hundred and fifty thousand pound supercar. I was like, you didn't watch the video at all, at all man. Look at what I could. I, I can create and I have a Honda audience. It will definitely work. Like, and he literally just put, uh, he just, I literally replied again going, I wouldn't need the, uh, C- I wouldn't even need the NSX. Give me a CRV. I'll show you what I can do with like potentially the most boring car you make. I'll, I'll, I'll make content with it that's worth watching. And once again, he just ignored me. And I was like, the fucking attitude of some of these people, man, when they're giving out cars to other YouTubers who may ha- have less views, may have, a supercar audience and they're getting given a honda and it's like that's not correct that's not the correct place for that car to be but whatever man i'm i'm not gonna get too much into it i don't know who is at the honda pr bit now but I'm, i don't care I, I i'm i'm done with trying i will if i want to do honda videos i will find honda owners that will allow me to borrow them to do an honest video because then i'm not stuck within the pr stuff to uh butt lick, basically because that's kind of what you have to do with some people i think i feel <laughs> that's the truth um so this is a real shame because I always thought it'd be great to work with Honda UK and I got the opportunity to go to Honda UK HQ with Honda Pro Jason. It was really cool. But once again, one of the Honda uh, workers there, this lady who was showing us round, she ha- um, came running down and told, screaming and shouting at me, told, him, told me I wasn't allowed to film on the production line, only Honda Pro was. And I had been told leading up to this that I'd been cleared to film as well, which in turn become a lie. So once again, all right, it was a cool experience, but it was three days out of my life that I took out to go create a video that I never got to make. And they made me, well, they made Honda Pro Jason delete all of the footage off my cameras before I even went home, which I felt really fucking angry at, if I'm honest. I still love Honda Pro Jason. I still get on really well with him. I, I really like that guy. But I feel like Honda themselves fucked me. And I was like, do you know what? I'm fucking done with this shit. And that's why you don't see any new or modern Honda stuff on the channel. That's why if you do, it's a very honest um, way of talking about the cars. Because... I don't, I don't expect them to butt lick me. I don't expect them to kiss my ass or, you know, be like, oh, yeah, I just expected a fair shot. I feel like after eight or nine years of doing YouTube and the passion I've put in with their crappy brand, um, I thought they would at least at least acknowledge me for saying, like, for even coming there. Do you know what I mean? I'm there doing it. I was meant to be. I just feel really like they don't give a shit, and that's fair enough, but I think they kind of put that across in their cars nowadays as well. It is what it is, isn't it? Um so yeah, that's one thing that really knocked my confidence when it was coming to work with manufacturers. But on the flip side, Toyota UK had no reason to take me anywhere. This is I, I the most that I've ever said about a Toyota on my channel was probably the Land Cruiser my mum and dad had when I was younger, and I ran over a tent for a bit of banter. 
that was probably the most extent but they reached out and they were they were like dude we think your videos are quality we love your attitude we love how you can drive and back yourself up like i'm only bigging myself up here because this is what toyota said and they were like we would love to take you on a trip and they gave me 24 hours to decide to go and i went and i stayed in touch with the guys and they, they gave me once again another opportunity by sending me up to drift shifters content that works on my channel because that is what i do i do drifting and it was like cool they're sending me up here and they gave me a car for a week and it was just like they were like yeah keep it have fun with it and it was a rav4 hybrid and i have got a video of that coming out on my review channel soon um i finally have a place to put that video that doesn't seem out of place and and then once again the new G yaris gr came out and they sent me to portugal they sent me a fucking portugal guys like all off of their own They've paid for everything. Five-star hotel, food, whatever you want. They sent me there. Like I said, they have no reason to other than they like the person I am and the content I can make for them. Instead of looking down and talking down to me as, as if I'm a, you know, as I'm not worth anything. Oh, you're just a fucking scummy YouTuber. I'd like to remember, remind everybody because I don't think a lot of my followers will understand this. I used to be a freelance writer and photographer for magazines. I, I, I've always been involved in the car media industry. I used to do car reviews for magazines like it was cars that i would go out and find and review and talk about and go over with the audience and that's why i transitioned into car reviews on youtube with modified cars because that's what i used to write so i used to do that I, as a young kid I, I it was it's so annoying when people look down at you as oh you're just a youtuber all right i might be a youtuber but i'm also a lot of other things and uh I don't like being disrespected um, purely because I enjoy making fun videos on the internet. And I feel that's something that um, I think a lot of the people that work at these car companies, they're not car people for one. They are business guys and people they find like these car manufacturers will find straight out of university or from other businesses where they've got a good, uh, good um, uh, CV basically. And uh, you can tell what companies do have the car guys in and what ones don't, I feel. And I don't care who it is I work with. I'm a nice person. I would always be friendly, but I'm. I, that's the first time I've ever spoke about the Honda stuff uh, publicly. And I hope that you don't think I'm being a fucking spoiled prick about it. Like genuinely, like I never expected anything. I just couldn't believe how he spoke to me. And then on the flip side, how Toyota speak to me and have always been so lovely and wonderful. And I'm just like, see, this is how a car brand should be. And I hope in the future, I do get to work with more car manufacturers. It really is like, a dream of mine, I guess, um, even after my negative experience I've had, but I will just remember that in the future, and who knows, they maybe, obviously we know Honda UK have had trouble because they've had to shut down their plant and stuff, and it's such a shame that all the workers there, well, except for some of the management, that some of the work, that the most of the workers there are losing their jobs, because for, for some of them people that work there are, are wonderful, and it's such a shame that, that this is having to happen. Um, what else can I tell you about? Um, so what was i saying yeah so that's why the adam Weibel channel has been a bit funny and obviously i've been i, I built the the e36 that i've got the drift missile car that we're doing um that i'm doing sorry i've been building that over lockdown too all on myself all by myself i haven't been filming it i i just needed some time away from the camera because it's so hard to be oh look at me i'm at it when i'm happy oh look at this and then and when you're deep down like you're just like do you know what i really don't don't even want to leave my bed today because i'm feeling that shit and uh you know, it's so difficult, like, it's so difficult to do, to juggle everything sometimes. Um, I feel very privileged to be in the position I'm in, but I also feel like I have earned my way here. So I don't feel like I'm at the top of the tree yet. I still feel like I'm very, very much near the bottom of the ladder. And I think that is shown uh, with who interacts with me. I... I will be the same person now as I will be if I ever hit 100,000 subscribers, if I ever hit a million subscribers and all that sort of stuff. I will stay the same me because I believe it is important to not let the fake world um, the fake world impact who you are as a, as a core person. Because in reality, what is life? I think everything is a show. I feel everything is. And I feel like you get very lucky what part of the show you get to interact with. And... The core for me is once all the lights go off, well, who am I? And I'm still a guy who loves to go up and have a cup of tea with his mum. Every every chance I get, go and watch a football game with my dad. Uh, help him with his car if he ever needs it, with wherever I can help. Um, I'd love to go and sit with my granddad and have a glass of whiskey. Because this is why I live where I live. I live in an area where I am 
within five minutes to ten minutes, like uh, really well driving wise on four minutes from my mum and my granddad in separate directions, and uh, my, my dad too because he lives obviously with my mum, and um, within my garage I'm five minutes from my garage. I am twenty minutes walking distance as well. So it's like I lo- I'm a, I am a family guy at heart, and I really don't ever want that change. I I would always be that guy. I'm always gonna you know be the uncle to my niece and you know watch her grow up and that's why i did that chalkboard video i think that was the first time i really showed the e36 um i on the on the channel for a long time and i only did that because i wanted a little video of me and my niece drawing on it with chalk and that was the only reason i ever did that and it was fun you know and it was just like a cute little thing i don't want to get lost in the in the youtube world i don't want to i don't want to really have to change who i am my core values for a bit of clout, you know, I'm, I'm a 30 year old bald guy, man, look, look, I'm showing the people on stream, I've got fuck all there, but it is what it is, like, I'm, I am who I am, I'm a good person, I'm, I think I'm funny, <laughs> obviously, I think I'm quite a funny dude, and uh, that leads me on, uh, wanting to tell you what my next step really is, so, with all this working from home malarkey, and uh, the ideas, brainstorming, and how well the story time videos were received, they, to me, were like little 10 minute stand up sets, where I, was, I could test little things and do little jokes, and I, I am very, very passionate about stand-up comedy, and I would, I would love for that to eventually be where my passion takes me, and I get to travel and tell jokes and stories and and uh, share my experiences. And as of now, now I've kind of got like the background for everything else set up. I've been setting up a new website for a new company. I've been setting up my new YouTube, my new ideas for my new YouTube channels and getting all the stuff like you're seeing now all set up and learning how it uses and waiting for the equipment. Like I only had this stand delivered today and this is what's given me the chance to actually finally do the podcast I wanted to do. I spent some time today setting it all up and now I've got everything in, it gives me a chance to set aside some hours every week to write new material, new jokes for my, my stand-up. It's something I don't know why it's something I'm just so sure of. I, I'm I'm not that good at it yet. I'm no I'm not. I've only done three gigs and my last gig was terrible. It was uh, um it was a bringer gig, I can't even remember where it was called. The Cavendish Arms, I think it was called in London. And I got, I think I got really fucking unlucky. So because from being outside of London, it means I can only really bring very limited people. And I was very lucky. One of my friends, Jason, came with me to watch. And I, I knew a few of the other comics that were on. So I kind of had like three or four people that I knew would laugh. <laughs> you know, like when you're there, you, you, they get your humor. They, they know your humor. And when you're like, you're telling jokes in front of other people, for the most part, it's nerve wracking. But if they're there for a comedy night, like my second gig was a comedy night in Dover. And it was fucking brilliant. It was so so good the louis armstrong pub in um Dev- uh, dover i think it was and it was it was fucking quality and i can't thank sally enough for putting that gig on and having me there and giving me the opportunity as a very new comic and i got laughs i had a great time people were loving it i was loving it but the second the third gig i did at the cavendish arms is what you call a bring a gig which is where you bring the audience basically everyone in the audience is there Basically, everyone in the audience is there because one of the comics has bought them. If you want to perform that night, you have to bring an audience. And I found out that a couple of the London, younger London guys had bought massive parts of this crowd. And I just don't think many 18 and 19 year olds would really relate to my joke that I tell because I don't think they're they've lived that experience. I think like when comedy is like subjective because it relate you relate to it doesn't don't you or you can relate to it you can kind of put yourself in a position where you're relating to it but when you're just a uni guy that's just shagging everything then it's hard to listen or joke you know it's, it's, i don't know it's, my jokes i think is it, i think my joke is good but it needs it needs reworking to work with every audience i think that's what i learned from that but i went on after a guy that had been doing comedy for 10 years and he was so funny and they give you no set so you've got no time to prepare yourself to go on so after this really funny guy went on he was really funny like an irish dude he was hilarious an old guy he was just so funny i went on and i i opened my set by going how the fuck do i compete with that how do i follow that and that was what an honest thought went through my head was how do i follow that because i had no confidence walking up there i was like oh my god whereas walking up at the other gig i was buzzing I was like, yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready to fucking smash this. And I, I messed up my joke in the first line and that just threw me off completely. I was like, huh? you know, like, oh, shit, oh shit. Like, um, I, it just threw me completely off and it wrecked it for me. And then obviously uh, lockdown just went into full effect after that, after some stuff like 
I went through some stuff at the start of the year, if you can't tell me, you keep mentioning it. And uh, I don't want to keep banging on about it, honestly. I, I really don't. Um, sorry, I just had to type something on my computer. Um, but, like, it really has fucked me up. And it's going to take me a little while to get back to 100%. But I feel like I'm at, like, 65% now in, uh, in terms of how I feel and all of that sort of stuff. So I, th I, think, I think I'm on the up for sure. Um, sorry, I'm just going to type this in on this because I really want to get this done before I forget uh, while it's on my brain. Um uh yeah so that was um that was the comedy stuff and i really want to push push into that in the future i really want to bring it into my um uh i really want to bring comedy into something i do way more and i really i want to be able to do everything i don't want to have to give anything up for what i'm doing i don't want to have to give up my civic i don't want to have to give up my drifting i don't want to have to give up my comedy i don't want to have to give up my my work I believe it's something that I now I'm focused again on the future. I can sort out. I can arrange. I can make this work. It's just working out how, how I spread my time so thin and how I also don't give up on real life too. I want to date. I want to take my dog on long walks. I want to adventure. I want to go on holidays. I want my camper van back so I can go away with the dog and just disappear and write some jokes and, you know, just... Um, see see where life takes me i think that's the most important um important aspect of my my current existence i want my 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 existence to mean something to me and to my future i want to make every second of the day count hence filming this now right now i am sat here absolutely starving i am so ready to go get myself some food and chill for the night and play call of duty um yeah, but I'm not. I'm doing a podcast, and it's the first podcast I've filmed in a while, and I want to make sure this is something I do regularly. I would love to do one a week. I feel that's something that I can definitely do, and uh, I'd like you guys to hold me accountable for that. It will be going across all the platforms as per usual, which brings me on nicely to Twitch, which is another thing I've dipped my toes into recently, which, wow, fuck me. If you want to make yourself feel irrelevant, get on fucking Twitch. Like, I average about six viewers a time on there which is crazy mate it's so so hard twitch is insane though i have so much fun on twitch just streaming my games interacting with the audience while i'm doing it it's just great and if i'm, I'm if i'm gaming anyway i might as well just be doing it so it's something that um i really enjoy i'm going to be uploading my clips and stuff to my ads channel um which you can find on my main channel now um of my highlights and stuff on there yeah so so yeah, I really want to chase the Twitch stuff. I'm going to try and... This is another thing. I don't want to give it up. I want to go. I've got a goal set. I'd like to hit 1,000 subs. Um, no, 1,000 followers on Twitch by the end of the year. And I'd love to just hit 25 subs as a... Wow, cool. That's kind of cool. You know, one of those things. I love entertaining. I love um, being in front of people and having an audience and trying to make people laugh. I think that's the main thing. Even on Twitch, I'm always reverting to that character where I just got a bit over the top and i'm trying to be yo yeah 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 blah, blah, blah. you know but that's what i'm like that's what i'm like without the camera when i game that's just who i become and i don't feel like that's a bad thing at all and i feel like i am staying true to myself i've been very honest with the honda stuff i think that's probably killed off any future chance of me working with them but that's the truth that's what happened and i'm you know it still hurts me to this day especially when i see like other youtubers i was working with and i won't mention names just in case it gets him in any trouble but when he had fourteen thousand subscribers they gave him an fk8 for a week and I was like, what the fuck? You know, like, I, I do Honda reviews. That's what I'm, I am I do. I've done Honda life for, forever. I've, since I was 14, I've been dicking around with Hondas. But I, do, I was just like, I don't understand why they snub me. But they will let this other guy with less followers that gets less views than me at the time um, have this car. But fair enough. Whatever. Like, that's your choice. That's their choice. That's whoever's in charge of PR's choice, you know? I would never turn down working with them, but I just want to let them know how they've affected me as a creator um, and really knocked my fucking confidence and hurt me in my creative journey and my... The knockback was shit, but I guess that's just real life, you know? Um, the entertainment industry in any form is a bitch. I mean, you know, I hear stories of my american friends and people involved uh, in hollywood and obviously i listen to a lot of podcasts and stuff from america a lot of people will go to hollywood chasing an acting career and never ever 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 even get past the audition stage so i am feel very lucky that toyota themselves gave me that opportunity to put myself on a pedestal a little bit when it comes to um, youtube because i got to feel special for the for a little while and i can't believe it was so long ago now man how long i'm just looking at my youtube channel now it must have been six months ago 
Where was it? Yes, yeah, six months ago. But that video got 102,000 views, which is which is double my sub count, which means that video was out to everybody. And it was a cool fucking car. And I got to have a great time on a press drive. And um, yeah. Also, I've noticed that collabs dried up with me. Um, I don't know if I've offended other YouTubers or fucked anybody off. I still got on really well behind the scenes with everybody. But it was only B7, TMY and Lee Lockwood that wanted to work with me um, up until about four months ago where Lee, uh, where the kind and Ricky from Living Life Fast kind enough reached out and said, do you want to do a video with me, man? You can do it on your channel with my, uh, my M4. You can drive it. And fuck me. That was amazing. Like, So I've really only collabed with a few YouTubers recently and I obviously want to do more. I'd love to love to do more i don't know whether everyone is just feeling how hard it's been on youtube especially if they are dependent on the, the ad rev um uh, i don't know whether they're dependent on the ad rev i don't know whether they're dependent on that as their sole income and it's been stressing them out because i know the adpocalypse fucked people and i know that and that's another thing i'm going to touch on this as well but i know that it really hurt people and it really um it really fucked with the uh, a lot of people and i understand that it could be a bit of a knockback i know bocker only does one video a week which is a real shame because i i love bocker as a creator he's fantastic i love bocker as a person but um you know it, that was great but we only really got to do that collab recently like seven fucking months ago but i i sold him my e36 i can't believe it was that long ago this this is what i mean when mental health fucks you like the last seven eight months have been an absolute blur i mean that like it's been i, I don't remember any of february None of it. I don't remember any of February and the second half of January. I don't remember any of it. I have I, the only recollect, rec uh, recollect, the only like memories I have from that are me f being sad, and that's crazy, right? I put a brave face on for some YouTube videos, um, just so I had my my channel didn't die. Basically, that's that's what I did, um, and I managed to get a few videos out there. They all did pretty terrible for views, but it is what it is, uh, and. I don't think that some people realize that when you're going through something like that and you're still trying to create and then you read your comments and you're just getting ripped to shreds by these people that you thought liked you and it's like, fuck man, you have to take a break. And I think that's why I haven't filmed much over the last, I've filmed a lot. I've got a lot of videos to go live. Um, my, uh, on my Patreon is going to get another one tonight, which is, um, which is pretty cool. I, I really like being able to do that, like posts for the patrons and that. But, um, it, you know, it's been, it's been one of those fucking just one of those 2020s just fucked me man and this lockdown on a completely selfish note really allowed me to spend some time in my house not worrying about what anybody else is doing and i could just refocus massively and get through the pain and get through all of the shit that i was feeling because then it meant i could um i could really refocus my energy which i feel like i have i feel like I've, i i feel like i've achieved that um this lockdown i feel like i really have achieved something and my my now goals are i'll listen to you right now i want to i want to slowly but surely sort my health out my, my especially my mental health but my my body as well i want to get into a better shape i want to look a bit nicer i'd like for me to be a bit more proud of how i look physically even though i am the same person regardless of a, a dad bod or not um but i'd like to i'd like to really uh push my my health and my jujitsu and my kickboxing really hard i also want to make podcasts and i want to make my news show that i'm now doing on my other channel and i want to make car reviews and i proper car reviews not just modified ones and there's going to be videos like that getting uploaded soon too i'm working with george kingsley and uh, mantis cars on those um and any other cars that people will allow me to borrow i want to do professional style car reviews like i said i used to write for magazines this is not something that is new to me it's it is what i've done for over 10 years now and my blog at one point was one of the biggest car blogs in europe i was getting like so i the only way i can explain this is i found out how many magazines banzai magazine sold and they tried to ring me to sell me advertising space and i said well no but, but i know how many issues you sell a month so considering i'm about eight times bigger than you do you want to advertise with me and their monthly sales were what i was getting in a day so i was getting uh, like probably about 100 times the viewership that they had yet they were charging extortionate money um for um adverts whereas i was just doing it for fun <laughs> you know like and I, I i really am passionate about that and I, w I want to create car builds for everybody i truly do but i cannot compete with other youtubers i cannot do it i have to work at my own pace and i feel like my own pace uh having if i think i've got adhd i always think I've, I've always sort of had it but i've been doing a lot of research into it recently and it really hits home with me 
um when i read the stories and the doctor notes on adhd and i believe i have it i, I do believe i have it i'm not diagnosed but i'm i believe i do um when you can't hold concentration on something that you're not passionate about it's impossible uh, a lot of these car builds i get are not passion projects my passion projects are my nissan sylvia my m3 eventually um that you'll get a video of soon on that main channel actually but um um my m3 and my sylvia are my passion projects my red eg6 my sylvia and my m3 everything else is just like stuff i'm i'm having fun with uh i bought that mercedes c-class because it was only 80 quid didn't even want it i just i just said i'd have it for it was 80 quid uh i'm gonna try and sell that once i've got it all tidied up and free an mot and i'm gonna try and make a bit of a profit on it so i can put that into my nissan sylvia the car that no one cares about on the channel but that's where all of my money's gone um my nissan sylvia now officially stands me in at double what i paid for my m3 and my m3 was a low mileage le 500 in a period where they were still fetching top money so that's i just want to put that across like i'm passionate about my nissan and i feel truly lucky that i have any audience at all especially the ones that do stick with me through everything i just wish some others were a bit more open-minded to the content that i can produce because i feel like i am better than just fitting coilovers to a honda civic that's what I personally feel, and I'm I'm, I'm going to show you that. I'm not I'm not I'm not here asking you or begging you to come and give me a chance. I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking show you. That's what I do. That's what I do. I, no one thought I'd do stand up comedy. I fucking did it. No one no one thought I'd do YouTube in the first place. When I first mentioned it, people were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Uh, the only person that was like, "Yeah, you should definitely do that," is Sam Pilgrim, uh, the the professional mountain biker, and he is still one of my cheerleaders. That whenever we meet up and talk, he gives me ideas to do, and I'm going to try some of these crazy ideas that on the Adam Ivel channel. I feel like. I feel like they, they'll work quite well on there. Um, I was going to talk about something, right, the adpocalypse and all that sort of stuff. So this is something a bit more serious, more YouTube-y. So I think we'll probably finish this uh, podcast up on this. Um, so with it, when it comes to YouTube, a lot of um, YouTubers live off ad rev. In England, I don't know why, but I feel like we are punished. I feel like we get way less um, monetization benefits than the Americans do, whether, whether they just have a better amount of money coming in in america to be able to spread out to their american youtubers but the americans are definitely on a higher rate of money than we are here when it comes to car youtubers now the adpocalypse is something that really really fucked me off because all of the mainstream media outlets that were causing all of this adpocalypse were are guilty of even worse in my opinion crimes than the youtube platform they will lie and manipulate stories to get the most clicks and they will ram their websites and their videos full of adverts. Now, why are the mainstream media allowed to do this? But a YouTuber that might do something a bit stupid or swear or say fuck or piss or whatever, they then get demonetized. They, the YouTubers are punished. The YouTubers that don't get a wage. The YouTubers that rely on ad revenue and the mainstream media are attacking them. How dare they? The hypocritical cunts. I'm going to use that word because I fucking hate them. I feel like they're all a pawn of the government for the most part. I hate the government. I won't go into this on this one. If you want me, I'm going to go into more um, uh, over the top uh, topics on this. Because like I said, I'm not being pigeonholed. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, Rev Match is the name of the podcast. But I'm going to be talking about everything. And I think I, I feel like the, the mainstream media really fuck YouTubers. And then they have their own platform on here that they're happy to post their videos on. Um, so in reality, they're fucking themselves as well. It just doesn't make sense to me why they don't just shut the fuck up. I feel like a lot of these idiots are coming out of university to write um, and get their name heard in the journalism world and they want to be the one that brings down pewdiepie or they want to bring the ones that bring down keemstar or h3h3 or any of these big times that are earning millions and millions of dollars and pounds on this website uh i i i, I think that they they want the slice of their the pie but they don't realize that youtube's a community driven platform for the most part and uh people like pewdiepie will never die pewdiepie i think could go over to twitch and i still think he'd be vastly successful and uh, I'd follow him over there. I love PewDiePie's videos. I watch them almost every single day. And uh, I don't tend to watch his Let's Play, Let's Play ones, but every like sit-down video where he does a Reddit video or anything, I watch that. KSI, they always try to drag him down. But look at him. He's showing you he cannot be pigeonholed. He's gone from being a FIFA YouTuber to a rapper that has an, uh, an album in the top 10. And deservedly so. I, I really, really love KSI. I think I look up to KSI as a YouTuber of who I would like to aspire to be like, where you have what you're good at, which is obviously very good at the gaming stuff and the personality-driven stuff, 
I feel like I'm a personality driven guy. And whether I end up doing car reviews or I end up doing gaming videos or whatever it ends up being, I'm going to stay true to myself. And I feel like it's um, something I'm passionate about. So I've been very honest in this podcast. And I feel like if this ever gets to the right, the wrong people, it's going to affect me massively in the future when it comes to doing press stuff. But I had to be honest with you guys. I had to get it out there and just level with you and understand why sometimes I'm a bit bitter about it and why I've kind of said fuck off to the Honda brand and not bought the new Type R. Because why would I, why would I, support a brand that i openly feel disrespects me so nah nah or some of their employees not so much the brand itself but the people that the the brand chooses to represent them um yeah i feel like that's all i have to say on this now and i am starving so this is a 45 minute podcast and um, they may be longer they may be shorter i'd love to get people on here and have them in this room with me we can adjust the microphone to be sat in the middle of the room it's on one of these swing arms so i can just put it bang in the middle and we can have two people in here uh i hope you like the kind of on-screen aspect of it i use a webcam to film this so i had to make the aspect ratio smaller and i've used some of my twitch stuff to kind of bring it in and i just thought it was kind of cool i hope you guys like i said have enjoyed this i will see you again uh soon if you want to check out my other uh channels they're all linked down below and if you're listening on spotify or anything please hit subscribe it means so much to me that you guys will stick around um i want to say thank you for listening if you've made it this far i'll catch you in another one bye signing out baby